You're good. All right, motion to dismiss. No, it's a little <laughs> April. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Town of New Windsor April workshop. Before we get started, can I get everybody excited for the pledge? The pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, Thank you. So before we get started, uh, I have an entire <laughs> town board here, and then some. I have uh, Councilman C. Moreau, Councilwoman Sylvia Santiago, Councilwoman Eve Lincoln, Councilman Kelly Bro. Also have with us the Highway Superintendent Anthony Fayo, our receiver of taxes, Sue Scheibel, Town Clerk, Patty Carino. We got our... Uh, Town Attorney Dave Zagon, he's down below the camera. Uh, Police Chief Danny Valeri, also the Deputy Chief Brian Hollyfield. Anybody else? All right, so we'll get started with the agenda here. Uh, the first thing on the agenda tonight is uh, PJ Properties, 12 Machete Road. So I received a, uh, a letter. Uh, I've gotten a couple of letters, hold on, but I, so, so I received the last letter here. Um, a request for amendment to our the uh, schedule use our bulk tables. So right now, uh, P and J Properties, which is twelve Machete Road, um, it's a uh, body shop, if you will. It's right across the American Legion, right mm -hmm. on the bend there. They're in a PI zone right now, um, and they were looking to they purchased or in the middle of purchasing or purchased the property behind it, which uh, was A and R Concrete in the back of that there. Um, and they're looking to basically expand their business to uh, allow for their shop to be expanded in the back there. And that's not zoned for that. The mechanic uh, is not in it. So they're looking for to um, change their the zone, PI zone, the bulk tables to allow body shops or, or mechanic shops in it. Um, the only thing with us changing that PI zone to allow that mechanics or, or body shops in it, it would change that for the entire PI zone in the town. Um, so we'd, we'd have to take actually a hard look at if we want. Um, I did do a little study and there is a number of um, uh, body shops and mechanics shops in the PI zone currently now, but they've all either been grandfathered in or predated, um, like P&J Auto Buys, predated uh, the zone back way back then, so they were looking to do that. I was, I, I did look at something that I, I, you know, maybe we can pitch. So we can't specifically change that parcel to the spot zoning. Not the spot zoning is illegal. Um, I was thinking about maybe at some point, maybe we could um, the HC zone, which allows it. Um, and I'll tell, give you a for instance, Devitts on thirty two behind Devitts. So right behind Devitts uh, is a rim shop right now. And then there's a super fun site property on Rochetti as well. <clears throat> Extending the HC zone into that property there, which allows mechanics and body shops, which would also encompass that. Um, I mean, you'd have to go in there and take a look at it uh, before we further. Um, the applicants, although they're here with us tonight. Um, yeah, I told them we were gonna discuss what our options are and what, what we could possibly do. Uh, again, like I said, I you know I look back and you know there was letters here back from 1997 um, <clears throat> saying that that mechanic shops are allowable in the PI zone, which is not. I have I have the PI zone back from '86 and they still weren't in there then, so I'm not certain how that all transpired. But well, um, someone from the town had said. Yeah, yeah. So back then, so I and th these folks aren't here anymore. So yeah. you know, so again, it's something that we got to you know. Uh, you know, how much is maybe going to look at? We can discuss it. We can, um, if we agree on it, I would have the applicants come to a board meeting, uh, put a presentation on for us, and then we can certainly go from there. Uh, like I said, it's it is right now the um, uh, you know their businesses are you know that whole corner there, and if you look at the um, the property that they purchased in the back, is they actually cleaned it up a lot and it came out nice. And you know, for me personally, I don't I think it would fit. 
Um, but again, we can't just change that particular lot for that. And for us to change the entire PI zone, there's probably a couple spots yeah, in town that, so we changed the PI zone to allow that in the bulk tables. It would allow it in the entire PI zone. But the yeah. HC would allow it. So HC does allow, it, but PI, you know, there could be over in some spots in town that, you know, may not lend the best to it. And that would open yeah. that Pandora's box, well, if you will, to that. So we have to do. Uh, what are you more leaning towards? So, I, you know, for me, I would be okay with, you know, perhaps trying to stretch the HC zone into there. Mm -hmm. Um and to um you could just do that for that one area then? so we could it can't be yeah. a parcel it's got to be a, a it's got to be a, an area okay. you know i would also court the 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 um the businesses that are there now either property mm -hmm. owners let them know what you know we're looking to do and you know it won't affect their current mm -hmm. um businesses now mm -hmm. no one knows what's going to happen down the road but we can ask them there was um you know it's crazy i was talking about it with the assessor there's a super fun site there that's been there for years and years couple maybe a week or so ago they removed it from the super fun site so now it's obviously a buildable piece of property so that could affect whoever owns who, who that property. owns that do you know i'm not certain hmm. I'm, i would have to look back it was probably owned by the same people that had the fun site they, must be pretty big probably it's a pretty big lot it is um i don't know maybe our applicant will go buy it and <laughs> make it a bigger lot okay. um but yeah so you know that's something that i'm gonna have you know i'll get in touch with them i'm not I'm talking like you're not here, but um, I certainly have them. Um, you know, I did get a formal request from their attorney to uh, change the zone or, you know, to to see which way, way we'd want to go. Either add the uh, change of both tables for that zone or, or make it a different uh, zoning area. So, again, it's something we can. I have the bulk tables. I have the maps for you. I can show you. You know, I'll show everybody. Mm -hmm. um if you want to stop in my office i can go i want to bog you mm -hmm. down with this now i can mm -hmm. show you the whole area what it's like the overview um again if you're going to take a look at it it's been uh cleaned up considerably down there mm -hmm. so it definitely looks and uh i think it'd be a pretty good use for uh for that piece of property so again i will have the applicants um they had the applicant has to although they they sent me a letter they, there's requirements in the town code they have to do they have to send a fee and uh, so on. So we'll make sure that gets all done if they're willing to still pursue it uh, next month. And then we'll put it on the agenda and have them come put a little presentation on. Okay. Uh, anybody else got anything you want to talk about? No, you're good. No, sure. Thanks for jumping into that. If you guys want to bail, you can. You don't have to sit, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't have to sit here and do the whole thing. Yeah. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, number two. So this has been a topic I, apparently in the political realm for the town for quite some time now. It's Windermere Estates. <clears throat> it's the formerly known as the Mount Airy Trailer Park on Mount Airy Road. Mm -hmm. They, right now they have their own what they call package plant that um, processes their sewage. And they're looking to connect smart moves. <laughs> <laughs> looking to connect to the town's uh, sewer system. It's down the road a bit. Uh, they have two options. One, they can go over through the reserve and hook into a, a, the main over there to hook in to go to that lateral, if you will, or down the road by Briarwood. Um, they have the option to go there, both at, obviously at their own expense. Um, it's not in the sewer district, so they'd have to we'd have to extend the sewer district for them to allow them to do this. Uh, they've ported to town a number of times. They're, they obviously like us too the DCs after everybody with their sewage and how they uh their plants and I believe they have some um DEC consent orders and stuff with their sewage plan there the DEC apparently is offering to help them monetarily wise if they were able to hook into the town's into the town sewer. I know they have been told in the past and I know my take on it personally is the same thing that you know we're trying to upgrade our sewer facility. And the capacity is really just not there. It's we're dealing with ninety five homes. That's um, going to be my next question. Ninety five. They say ninety five homes, manufactured homes with two hundred about two hundred twenty residents. Um, it's probably you know I, I they threw a number out there. They thought it was going to be around three or million ish or so. I would say double that at least, if not more. Um, and that's you know if they were to choose a route, if they were you know the towns uh, thought would maybe go down to the Briarwood pump station, that pump station needs some upgrading and, and uh, work done. Of course, that would be at their expense to upgrade it and, and take that. Again, we'd have to expand the um, 
uh, the sewer district. The problem, not a problem there, but in lies between that uh, trailer park and the Briarwood pump station, there are several parcels too through there that would also have the same opportunity to join that uh, sewer district if we decide to do that. Um, there is, you know, a couple big, big parcels over, um, my Anthony's familiar with the land over there that somebody can develop that you know, they can buy rights hook up to it. So it's something we got to consider too, whether we just give them the rights to that. Um, they did agree. However, I did tell them that they can never, they cannot hook up to it if we were to do it until our plants expanded. Mm -hmm. So they said it's going to take okay. a few years. Um, I do, um, I do know somebody that lives in there and they said they've already received a letter from them throwing a couple million dollar number at them and telling them that they're going to probably be on the hook for it. A lot of these, these yeah. people. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's something that, you know, obviously, but that's between them and their, and their uh, park, but, um, that's another consideration mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. they're So, um, they have, uh, the sewer district uh, requesting to us. Um, I don't know what, everybody's pleasure is here too but i know we have to change the uh like i said we'd have to add a sewer district there's uh, some work that they have to do with it's not it's not going to be done tomorrow but i believe they're under uh time constraint right dave they're under some time constraint i believe i know it's, i didn't mean to put you on a spot but i think for granting wise the dc I yeah i think they were under some time constraint for, um that they needed to know sooner or later so i mean i don't know if anybody has either um i don't know if you're armed with enough information about it i know we've talked you know, with a few of us off topic. Um, again, I it's going to be a a pretty big undertaking on their part to, to run this. I you know I don't know if <clears throat> you know I told them that they needed to. Um, it's going to be a multi multi million dollar project for them. So it's whether they can afford it, they have the money back. Yeah, what do you spread, spread that from against all those houses? That uh, you know that would yeah that would be, would be yeah. the unfortunate yeah. thing. And I think you know they think yeah. that's something that they need to consider what they're going to do. And yeah. Um, the DEC is willing to help there, though. So apparently, there are some grants out there in the DECs, you know, that are big on trying to help people with grants. So they're they going to apply. For us. I mean, so they do; they have to apply for it. And I believe yeah. there's a window that they need to do. Yeah, that's so quite a process. Um, so. I know they've been trying to do this for a long time, and they were then they've been told, you know, "Listen, we have um, capacity issues." So, you know, it's something that we we met with them a, a quick a virtual meeting, if you will. Um, and you know, I told them I'd be willing to hear them out, and I'll present it to the board. Sounds like they have a lot of work to do. So no, they do. They do have things. You know, I can go back and tell them, hey, listen, this is where we're at with it. Um, they would have to move as well as to do some things, more things with us legally, um, to allow this to happen. So, um, it's definitely not going to happen in the next couple of months. No. But I just want to have you all aware that they did come in and we talked about it, and we'll see where they go mm -hmm. with that. Um. The next thing is this um, hotel motel tax. So we're in the middle. Uh, we Dave's in the middle of this. Um, with um, we we're going through uh, both the Senate Assembly Bill that we have out there for this hotel motel tax. Um, this what this is going to do. This is basically will uh, allow us to put up to a five percent tax on a. We'll call it overnight stay for anybody uh, hotel motels in New Windsor. Uh, several of the towns in uh, around us have done it, have passed it. Um, they say it was pretty easy, but we're still waiting. I think they're in, in session now to talk about it. Um, it's a, I believe it's a three year program. Every three years, we got to renew it. Um, so uh, if this gets passed, this will put a, um, which basically the hotel owners pass it on to the, uh, the people that are staying there mm -hmm. and they pay the tax and then we end up getting the percentage of the mm -hmm. tax for that. So um, again, it's a um, something that's in progress right now with, um, I know uh, the Senate, the ECUS and SCUFUS have, uh, both offices have put a lot of work into it for us. And I know Dave has put a lot of work into it. And I think we're just waiting for them to approve it now, right, Dave, to their Senate bill or? Well, after uh, Wednesday's, Board motion. Yeah, <clears throat> we have to send a municipal home request form to each of the houses. Yeah, okay. Um, council for each of the houses, and then we'll take it up. So once we um, approve the motion on Wednesday, that the official paperwork goes into them, and then they forward it. They, they're apparently they're getting good at it. So they've started it um, last year with other towns, and so we'll hopefully uh, get that sooner and later. Uh, this next thing here is the Orange County 
uh, Youth Bureau grant funding. So there's um, this one here is for there's two of them. There's a ten thousand dollar one and there's a five thousand dollar one. The ten thousand dollar one automatically goes to our summer camp. Uh, Matt puts in for it every year, administers it, gets it. Um, he does a good job with it. And as well, along with that, there's a five thousand dollar grant too that we get from the Youth Bureau as well. It's supposed to be a we use it towards summer camp as well. Um, it's a youth bureau camp or uh, grant as well. That bulk fifteen thousand dollars goes into the um, summer camp for programs and and things like such uh, that we use for. And Matt handles that, or our recreation director will be handling that from this point forward. So there, you're going to see uh, motions on them on Wednesday too, just to prove that we're accepting them. Um, this next thing is the recreation uh, master plan that. Uh, I know I myself and Councilman Lincoln have been working on with our uh, engineers. So uh, basically, what this is, we're um, I'm sure everybody remembers back in uh, last year, we put in for some granting for some recreation programs. Uh, we were going to do pickleball and basketball. Oh, and Christy Babcock, we we didn't we never got the grant. <clears throat> I inquired through Scoopus's office why they came back with a pretty detailed report why. And one of the biggest reasons was that we didn't have a recreation master plan as our wants and needs in town, um, what kind of parks we have, how big they are. You know, I mean, they knew most of it, but there was things that we don't that were really important that we didn't have. So um, I actually reached out to Ekis's office to see if I can get some money towards this plan. He's still um, in the process of making that happen. Um, I asked him, I sent him a letter asking for 40000 for um for the the cost of the engineering cost for this plan um i did receive uh our our engineer mhe uh we actually ended up meeting with mhe and a uh, another firm called nelson pope and boris who is going to be hired basically by mhe to do the planning for this they go through they go to each park they pretty much evaluate and assess what's there uh, what could fit there the needs for there um, they do that in every park. Um, the biggest probably lift or heaviest lift is going to be Christy Babcock Park, of course, with that 80 acres that we have there now that's undeveloped. Um, when that hopefully gets alienated, um, when that gets done, that'll be designated as strictly parkland. Um, hopefully one day we'll have a nice, uh, recreation building on there or something, but that's a, a dream. Um, hopefully that will come to fruition one day. So of this, uh, recreation plan, there's of the $40,000, $25,000 will be paid to this um, recreation planning company who does this. And um, like maybe 10,000, maybe 15 at most would be paid to MHE to do all the mapping and, and to do all the planning and all that uh, happy stuff. Um, I did, um, we uh, uh, Councilwoman Lincoln had some things there that we were sharing. She had a lot of questions, <laughs> a lot of good questions. She spoke to MHE about um, you know, I, for me, I suggest we go for this. They want to have this done by August because August is the next round of granting for us for, um, and hopefully we can add, actually ask for a little more this time. Uh, instead of the 500, mm -hmm. we can go for a little more and get to do a few more things. So on the um, on the agenda Wednesday would be approving the spend expenditure of this money um, <clears throat> for that. Um, in the event that we don't get the ECAS coming through, which I'm pretty certain we're going to, but if we don't, It'll probably come out of parklands funds or on unallocated funds. Um, if I know we do have the unallocated funds for that, so we could do that. Um, so it won't be a hit to us and then. Um, if we could just mention what we had talked about. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Supervisor Pedetti and I talked about, you know, this comprehensive recreation plan would just be step one of our future. Um. Hopefully, like you said these plans come to light and come to fruition. So, uh, and I, we were on the same page basically when we talked about this, that keep in mind that this is step one and there's, you know, multiple other steps to actually making the plans that are gonna be in this plan come to life. And that would most likely be us deciding to bond one of these projects that the plan comes up with. So one of my concerns was, I don't want the town board to invest in this recreation master plan and just have it on a shelf in hopes that it will get us grants, but I want to actually use it to perhaps pull the trigger ourselves on uh, doing a project ourselves and not just relying on grants because that's you know always up in the air and not a for sure thing. And I believe you agree that 
this plan should be used for us to do something ourselves as well and not just use it to rely on grants. Um, so that being said, you know, if we're going forward with this, I would hope that the majority of us are comfortable with the idea of, you know, pulling the trigger and doing a recreation, a large scale recreation project in the near future, which would have to be bonded. And, you know, just to make one of these ideas come to life. And if we're not, if we're not there and we're not comfortable with that, then that's something we should talk about more. So I don't know if, um, I know the town Newberg, I haven't almost going to ask weeks, I have a note to uh, follow a week, uh, Mike Weeks tomorrow from MHE. Uh, I know the town Newberg went out to bond for, or went out to bid for their uh, gym. I um, think they, they, it's closed. I'm not certain if they open them yet, um, but I'm certainly interested to see what numbers they come back with. Um, I think it was anywhere between a 10 and 12 ish million dollar project they had. So it was no small little fee. It was definitely right. big. Um, I know, you know, as far as this, even granting money, I mean, I have a, um, a thought. I know we discussed it bringing this, uh, you know, back from my childhood when Rochetti Park was a teen center, um, bringing it back to for middle aged kids, you know, younger kids, teens that can go in there and do whether it be. Listen, we all know the gamings and all that stuff today are huge to redo the inside of that. I know we got some prices to do some of that. Um, would help for this granting and this mm -hmm. mapping. I know there was some talk about maybe a beach volleyball court down by the old uh, ice skating rink. Mm -hmm. um, I know Christy Babcock has a couple of small footprints on there that are really shovel ready, whether it be basketball or pickleball or um, which was, you know, I was kind of, I mean, not okay. You go look, drive by the tennis courts, which yeah, are tennis converted ball. pickleball courts. Yeah, ah, yeah. yeah. It can be 12 degrees or it can be 95 degrees and it's packed. It's so, uh, you know, I, I don't even think we need a planner to know the want need for that. Right. It's yeah. there. You know I mean? That'll, it's just a matter of getting a footprint in the funds, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, to for everybody, everybody knows that we have, um, you know, it, it'll be recreation programs, unlike um, water and sewer plants that we're doing, you know, all have their own taxing districts for that. So it's yeah. easier to fund and bond that recreation comes right out of the general fund. So, you know, that's a, a direct hit to each taxpayer. So we got to just be, you know, we, I, I, you know, my, to be frugal, I think we need to, you know, baby step it, but at some point we may need to bond some of this stuff right. to, to get this stuff done. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, quite frankly, you know, I think a plan like this would be, you know, we have a comprehensive master plan we have a plan to the town, Well, we have nothing as far as recreation. Mm -hmm. um, we know we want to um, build our recreation program. Um, I'm sure people are going to hear, I've not heard some recreation news recently that, and I guess now's a better time to announce it that if people don't know Matt, our 18 year recreation director is moving on to bigger and better things. Um, so we're going to have a new mind come into this. Um, you know, and to, to Dave brought up too, uh, to his point as well, you know, do we have Matt's input on it or do we have the new recreation director, whoever that may be, come in and have input on this master plan too? So, you know, we're and we're kind of caught in, in the middle here because we want to, we're, we're going to approve the funds, but I want to get their input, but we don't know who they is or that person is yet. So um, it's going to be, you know, tricky, but I definitely think that it's, you know, time to move it in a different direction for uh, recreation. And, mm -hmm. and, I, I, I think you'll need input from both Matt from his experiences from talking with everybody and understanding what's going on and whoever new comes in what their experiences yeah. are you know what they know uh, and, and you know share their experiences no, agreed. From, right? agreed and I and, you know Matt's you know you know Matt deals with a lot of people and he has uh you know, hopefully he can share some of his wealth to the next person oh, yeah. uh, but he will um he definitely will weigh in, and I'm sure if we call him three months from now, he'll that's still weigh in. Yeah. No, he definitely. Yeah. Not, he said he'd make that, himself that, available. Yeah, 100%. Him. So I, um, but yeah, no, and then, you know, at some point, I, I you know, I'd like to see some community involvement, too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talked about some people, not just us. We, you know, some we have, some of us have some old minds. I'm mm -hmm. not speaking mm -hmm. for you young guys. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'd be nice to get some, a younger yeah. crew in here to come think of some, yeah. you know, we've had some already some ideas that were already, you know, put out there and we're dealing with it that came from some younger people and some of the things came from some older people. Um, so, but yeah, no, I definitely want to get some community involvement too, but so I what, think this is a good thing. That but doesn't do. the master plan, isn't part, uh, isn't part of it going out and getting public input, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no, definitely. So we're we're definitely going to have, yeah, no, definitely. We're going to get, um, and there's all parts of the town that we need to, we got our little pocket parks and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it'll work. So that again, that's gonna be something on there to um for just you know for vote to spend that money for that. 
Good. I spoke to the controller just so everybody knows, and she said we can we'll fit it in there. Good. Uh, next item on the agenda is the stop DWI traffic safety program. The grant it's um amount not to exceed five thousand five hundred two dollars. This is going to be something that's on the agenda to vote on. Uh, we get this every year. The um the money goes towards the police department does uh, stop the UBI patrols on you know some special things and we actually got one of our stop DWI experts in the room with us today too there Mr. Sussman. Um so that will be on there to vote just to accept the money. Uh next thing on the well on the well on the uh, mm -hmm. on the agenda is the well. So <laughs> Butterhill <clears throat> we have three wells on the Butterhill. <clears throat> Well number three, which is our largest production well, needs some uh, maintenance on it. So I'm sure as everybody's aware, uh, in October, the Delaware Aqueduct is shutting down for eight months, which is the Tan Newbers water supply. We have to, when there's an agreement with the DEP and the Tan Newberg and us to supply them with water during the shutdown period. <clears throat> we... Um, we want to try to get this maintenance in on well three prior to the uh, aqueduct, the Delaware shutdown. In the event, God forbid, if there's any problems with this, yeah. that we, we need to get this done now. Wells one and two have had some maintenance, but not a full maintenance like we're looking to do here. Um, we're we're worried about the doomsday scenario that if um, you know we get a, even though we use our main water source for the most part is the Catskill Aqueduct. Um, if we get a heavy rain event and it's the you know the water's too turbid, we can't process it. We have to shut that down. We have to go to our Butterhill plant. Um, our Butterhill plant, like I said, would be the main water source and that we have to feed town of Newburg. And we also have interconnects with the city of Newburg um, through Lake Street there that we can uh, take water from them on that same aqueduct as ours. City of Newburg has a better um, filtering system, if you will, when it's high turbidity than us. Um, we only have, I believe it's a 500,000 a day from them. City Newburg that we yeah, can take okay. up to Maine. Um, and this well here needs to be rehabbed. So we had um, our water operator came out, went out and got a estimate on rehabbing it. Mm -hmm. And the estimate came back to the 65,435. Um, in conversations with John Agito from KMO, uh, I asked him if he could um, perhaps go back to this company, SB Church, and ask them who's the one that put the code in for us and ask them if they can perhaps maybe give us some sort of a maintenance agreement for wells one, two, and three and the crow well going forward so we can keep these on a maintenance program and not have to spend $65,000 each time every five years or so. Right. Um, I asked them if he could check with them to see a possibility that that maintenance program will come with a reduced price in this number. So, okay. um, he said he would ask, you know, we can't promise anything, but I hope they can ask. So um, obviously this would, uh, you know, it's expenditure. So there was, um, we checked with, um, with Doreen in our law office and we can uh, accept this particular one bid for uh, for the maintenance of this for the 65,000 mm -hmm. um, through our procurement policy. Um, so this is gonna be on the agenda as well to just approve the maintenance of get this done. Um, it's going to authorize me to do it, to sign it, but we haven't really gotten the maintenance contract back from yet to see if it's all part and parcel to this. So <laughs> it could be a couple of weeks anyway, but it's going to take them like a month or so to, you know, uh, get their stuff here and start it. So we want to get this done before, you know, probably August or so. Um, so we get this done and, you know, if it gives us a little window to a buffer, God forbid, if they found something, I need some other maintenance, they can do it. So that'll be on the agenda for discussion as well. Uh, appropriation of funds. Um, sure, I think everybody saw this. This is each year we have um, we appropriate funds, whether a, a fund balance is above or below, and uh, we just appropriate them. And it's just the motion that we have to deal with that. Please go. Um, if you look at all the stuff up there, that's our wonderful audit packet that uh, we're being audited now. Um, our audit agency. Um, I will say this: I came in this morning, and they came in to sit here and do the audit. And I never met the, the the folks before. And he came in and introduced himself. And I said, oh, you got a long day. He goes, I'm telling you right now, I enjoy coming in with her. He goes, working with Doreen is like a breath of fresh air for us. So I was kind of happy to hear that. 
he was uh he said this is really an easy one for us they go through the process and they do it so um but there's a lot for Doreen too there's a lot for that uh moving on to planning board fee i think everybody um got the email that i sent out with the with the april workshop so you know <clears throat> So once a month I do an infrastructure meeting we have with the planning board and zoning board and, and uh, the attorney's office and, and so on. <clears throat> so just to give you an idea of we we got talking about warehouses and stuff and our planning board fees and I've been kind of questioning some fees and stuff. And the example that was given in here um, for the town of New Windsor for somebody just in this numbers were just thrown in here as an example. For somebody to build a, a 500,000 square foot warehouse in New Windsor, their fee would be $525 for the application to put the warehouse in. And they'd have to put a $5,000 escrow up for the, for the, to do this process, which is $5,525. For the same proposed warehouse in the town of Newburgh, it's $126,650 fee and one hundred and one thousand dollar escrow. Yeah. So what the hell. Um, so I would. I'm thinking about building some warehouses in New Windsor and the other towns too. Uh, yeah, mean, we're we're it, not even. So yeah. if you look at the places in yellow, they're the ones that our engineer actually deals with. Yeah. Um, so you know, this is a standard schedule of fees yeah. change um, that we can you know just change. But I wanted to. Kind of get the input from the board and not just do it myself and then say people geez what are we doing here um i uh, for me i think it's crazy that we don't come up with some sort of plan to increase that fee yes. to um i'm not saying it has to be that but it, it should be definitely no, something that there should be it should be comparable yeah and that. there is I no i think that's yeah and you know when we got talking about an infrastructure meeting the uh our representative from MHE is like, oh, I got some numbers for you. I can bring them into you. So I'm like, yeah, I'm interested in the same and the things that they do. Um, I just think it should be to make it even across the board. Um, I think we should change our fees to, yeah. to that. So I'm going to um, talk to uh, our law office tomorrow. Um, I know we have some other schedules, uh, schedule yeah. fees to, to change that we want to add. Yeah, um, that's mine. This is yours. If, oh, you want, yeah, if that yeah. one has notes on it, I just, if it? you wanted that, oh, back. that's a copy. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. blurry. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah it is. I know. I know. It is a little. So you know, like I said, um, oh, I, I think I'm going to. Um, and, and, <laughs> no, we take some of the other ones. The town of Monroe for the same warehouse is ninety thousand. Town of Montgomery is one hundred thirty-five, and town of is two hundred twenty-seven total, and ours is five thousand. So I think we're yeah. I think we're in a different different planet here with that. So. um you know, I'm going to look to see that get increased just so uh, you know, I'll be aware of it, but we'll talk about it more. Uh, number 10 is just, it's going to be on the um, on the uh, agenda for approval for the, um, this is something that Dave, he's good at it. He's, um, this is the contract with uh, DEC for the payment of our um our aqueduct water until uh, they come up with a permanent resolution for us. Um, I believe this is for one year, right, Dave, and a three-year or two-year option, or? It's it's a two-year contract, two. but you take it one year at a time. Right. So after year one, if both the town and the state agree Good. to um, extend it for uh, another year, it's already set. Right. That's already allowed for in the contract. Uh, and then there's two other Two options um, for yeah. for rollovers. Yeah. Like it, it could be able to afford the contract. Yeah. So that's um we've had a, a couple meetings, especially coming up with this shutdown. Um the DC, especially one of our representatives, has been, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my dealing with they're very good with us. So we um hopefully uh and then we had a meeting, a quick virtual meeting today, Dave and I with the so uh, Gillibrand's office and reference to this, maybe getting some, hopefully some, uh, some other water money that we're going to hope for, but that's out there. Uh, moving on to the uh, rabies clinic. So um, Patty and her office are putting on a rabies clinic January or June 1st, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. 
uh, out of Christie Babcock Park. <laughs> so we got to, oh. you're going to be out there and help so yeah. Of course. You always do. Absolutely. Yeah. I saw what the county selected us this year. That's yeah. great. So that's. Um, right. We actually called. Cool. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Yeah. And then. Um, they do cats too. With, mm -hmm. with the same thing. And ferrets and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, yeah. ferrets. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Ferrets. Patty's yeah. also I doing did. an opening did. of the dog park mm -hmm. uh, April 27th from 11 to 2. Um, he's giving out. Uh, he's mm -hmm. getting pup cups, and I'm All like, right. what the. But it's okay. it's a good idea. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Um, there we go. Uh, you get to smooch your pooch, right? Yep, having a, yeah, having a booth little and... booth set up. You can get a picture with your dog. Food truck and yeah, no, it's a pretty yeah, it's, yeah. I, it's exciting. We also have something there, so if people want to sign up for the rabies clinic, like it's rabies able, clinic, and then the dog right. park. Anybody wants to join the dog park that yep. hasn't can so yep. and if even if you're not a member, you can come. Yep. See what we'll, see what we offer, mm -hmm. and then um, then you can come in and join. Maybe she'll have a laptop there. Let you go right there. No? I'd love to. Yeah, this guy right here. Yeah. You're enough. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> the last thing on the agenda is this um, uh, all-terrain or ATV law that we've been kicking around for the last four years, at least since I've been on the board. Um, there, uh, you know, believe it or not, it's been, you know, been a little bit of a problem, and I mean, especially in the... <laughs> The city next to us, but we've had our fair share of issues with uh, ATVs and motorcycles unregistered driving around. Um, now with this barrel bail reform, they just drive around and laugh at the cops and give them the finger and make them chase them, and it's just it's insane. Um, I think with this law, it would give us a little more latitude and teeth for us to to deal with it, um, especially when it comes to <laughs> um, impounding them. So we're gonna uh, we we just within the last um, I know last year we started this uh, trying to finish our impound lot which we did out at Stewart. Um, the police department has their own impound lot. It's cameraed and fenced. It's nice. Um, now, if we start impounding stuff, normally we've been doing they've been impounding like police and our motorcycles and ATVs when they get them they bring them back here and then we'll put them in a shed or something. We can throw them out of our um, our impound lot now and. Starting hopefully next month, we're going to have a mechanism to start charging uh, impound fee. We just have to add that to the standard schedule of fees, which we will have a couple of things to add for next month. Um, and then we can do that. And we can start, uh, you know, generating some revenue, if you will. If people don't want to buy by law and we catch them, we get them, we're going to impound them and they're going to start costing for them to sit with us now when they haven't in the past. So. Um, matter of fact, we have a, a truck out there now that we just have to store. We can't, we don't have a mechanism to charge right now. But um, just for all those people out there listening, don't get impounded and let us have it because we might keep it. Um, and that's it. I just wanted I, if anybody, anybody saw it too that front, um, our digital front sign has been started. We got the, the concrete posts in the ground. Um, I, I, I'm hoping to get it done this year. The reason I say that is because it seems like every day it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. So my concrete guys are like frustrated. They can't figure it out. So mm -hmm. that and they, um, the bandstand, they took the wood decking out and now it's going to be a concrete pad with a more, we'll call it a handicap ramp. Uh, especially it's used for weddings and a, a number of things. So that's going to have a, a nice gradual ramp up to it. Um, and it's going to be a concrete pad. It's framed out. If you see it outside, it's all mm -hmm. set. But again, we need no rain to pour it. So mm -hmm. that's scheduled for Friday if anybody wants to come and watch. Not going to be this week. I bet. That's right, yeah. Yeah, well, I think Friday's supposed to be nice. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully. Um, I, well, I ordered it. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We'll see. That's my plan. See if you screwed up the order. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And plus, we have glasses to watch it. <laughs> well, that's for Monday. I um, yeah, that's. I'd like to make a motion. That's anybody got anything else or no? Nothing? No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve, you want to make a motion to go to executive session? I'd like to make a motion to go to executive session. I will second. You're going to? I will second. Right. How about that? Well, for all those that are...